put things in context leading up to our legislative session, which started in January, we, we were facing a $1.4 billion deficit over the next four years. I mean, that's what the governor told us, right? So, and he had announced uh, probable furloughs of thousands of state workers, including teachers, and also the, the gutting of state agencies. And we also had record high uh, unemployment. But thanks to the federal government, we received $1.2 billion in uh, American Rescue Plan funds. And this prevented a catastrophe, basically, at the Capitol. And then on a positive budget note, the state budget that we passed last week included uh, over $20,757 in federal funds for the emergency food assistance program. So as we look to alleviating hunger, our state ag department plays a key role. And we hear the, the stats repeatedly. Hawaii, uh, we import 85 to 90% of our food each year at a cost of $3 billion. And, the average age uh, of our local farmers is 61 years old, and everybody's wringing their hands. But listen to this. Howard, the DOA, Department of Ag, their budget only represents a measly three-tenths of one percent. That's just three-tenths of one percent of the total state budget, which is a combined $31 billion for the two-year biennium. So the fact is, we're going to need more of an investment in our Department of Ag if we're going to make bigger progress in feeding our people. And you probably already know that the pandemic has disrupted local food systems and caused losses for farmers who, who sell their products to local markets. The Hawaii Farm Bureau, they estimate that Hawaii's farmers and ranchers are suffering a 40 to 60 percent decline in sales on average. And so estimated sales losses for local food producers alone average $2 million per week. So the Department of Ag, they've been very, they've been key in helping our farmers stay afloat and to help provide needy families with food uh, led by their, their market development branch. And, and with additional funding from the Urupono Initiative, uh, the Department of Ag implemented the COVID-19 Emergency Farmer Relief Program. They distributed 203 grants, totaling over $407,000 in amounts of $2,000, $4,000, and $10,000 in response to decreased demand from restaurants, hotels, and caterers to bring some financial stability to farmers, ranchers, producers, and nonprofits. And additionally, in the 2020 calendar year, the Ag Loan Division, they provided 22 food production loans, totaling over $3 million. Department of Ag, they also contracted with the Food Basket to provide $500,000 of CARES Act funding from the feds uh, in the state to implement and administer the C-19 COVID-19 response program for the Supplement Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, recipients. And the Bucks, Double Up Food Bucks program, it doubles the value of SNAP benefits statewide the purchases of locally grown fruits and vegetables. And several private sector organizations secured $500,000 for DeBucks to increase SNAP buying power for recipients at participating grocery stores. So the state match increased that amount to $1 million for SNAP recipients. And as a side, this session we passed SB 512 which will increase access to locally produced food by expanding the, the Bucks program uh, to include healthy proteins that are eligible for the federal SNAP program and by repealing the $10 per visit per day cap on the dollar for dollar match. So this bill is, is now on the governor's desk uh, for his hopeful signing. Uh, he's got until uh, June 21st to submit his intent to veto, and then July 6th to decide ultimately whether he's going to veto it or not. But another good bill that I'd like to quickly uh, mention is uh, Senate Bill 244. Uh, Hawaii businesses and residents, we, dis we discard more than 237,000 tons of food waste per year. At the same time, many people on our island go hungry. 
And so what this bill does is it expands the liability protections for organizations like Hawaii Food Bank and others that, that provide food donations to the needy. And so what this, the bill will allow the donation of expired food. You know, when you go to the store and you look on your cereal box and it says expires on such and such a date, right? So this allows the donation of expired food when the donor makes a good faith judgment that the food is unspoiled. And uh, Charlotte, I asked that uh, you asked that I nominate at least one student to participate in today's event. And I chose to nominate uh, future Farmers of America President, Dina Sistoza, and their secretary, Hanna Apostol. They're both 11th graders at Waipahu High School. And the future Farmers of America, they are critically important to both our state and our nation's future. Uh, FFA has been in Hawaii for 92 years. And during that time, this program has produced successful farmers, business and community leaders, and legislators. FFA is the key to helping us feed our residents with locally grown food. And I have to talk about Ma'o Farms, Ma'o Iopio, or literally the garden that grows young people. They're doing amazing work out on the Waianae Coast. And Waianae has the world's highest concentration of Native Hawaiians and represents the most socioeconomically disadvantaged community in Hawaii. So a guy named Gary Mauna Kea Ford, he's a Kiwi, and his local wife, uh, Kukui, they started up a five acre organic farm in 2000. They expanded it to 24 acres. And now, today, it's at 281 acres. But it's not just a farm. They began a, they started up this youth leadership program that provides uh, local at-risk youth with leadership training, entrepreneurship, and experiential learning through a, a unique and transformative, really, farm to college to career program. It's for youth who are age 17 through 25, uh, who collectively manage all aspects of the farm's day-to-day -day operations, planting, harvesting, marketing, distribution, everything. You know, I've been out there on numerous site visits the last time I checked the students, now listen carefully now, the students work from dawn to noon on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and they get paid, students get paid, a monthly stipend of $525. And that's not all. In addition, they get all of their tuition paid for at either the community college or UH. And usually when I'm giving a speech and I, a bunch of parents, parents are going, yeah, where do I say up about my kid? I want <laughs> So uh, with over 200 program graduates, 48 baccalaureate degrees, 132 AA degrees earned to date, Ma'o's flagship two-year youth, uh, youth leadership program is helping Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander youth build cultural, educational, and financial assets. And the farm has become one of the largest providers of certified organic foods in Hawaii. And they generated almost a million dollars, $960,000 in annual re revenue. So Ma'o Organic Farms, they grow and sell over 60 different fruits and veggies to the grocery stores, restaurants, and the public uh, through farmers markets and a community supported agriculture, their, their CSA program. And the demand for Ma'o's organic produce far outstrips the current supply. And that's why they're currently in the process of expanding. So they've been serving 107 youth in their leadership program on 24 acres of land. But now they have 281 acres. They plan to serve 494 youth by the year 2027. So any of you young folks that are out there have a little green thumb, and like, <laughs> you might want to explore that opportunity. And then finally, but certainly not least, we have to do more uh, to entice young people into farming. And I'm hopeful because of FFA, 4-H, and Ma'o Farms, but we need to do much more. Every speech I give to young people, I tell them that farming is a, is a noble profession, no less noble than being a, a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher, or a, or a business person. Not long ago, I got a call from a mom on the North Shore, and she told me that her son, who not only had a green thumb, but every day his joy was going out to their veggie garden Weed, their garden and weeding and planting and harvesting and 
practically since he was two years old. And so now he's in middle school and all of a sudden he's into tech stuff, cell phones, coding, playing video games. And the mom found out that his teacher had encouraged him to get into high tech because that's the future and told him that he would never make any money being a farmer. As the chair of the agriculture committee, you can imagine what I was feeling when I heard the story. The mom said now he never goes out to the garden anymore. He just plays with his computer and cell phone. And to me, that's heartbreaking. So we desperately need to change the negative stigma about farming and encourage our young people who have that green thumb propensity to follow their dream and point them in the right direction and help them in any way we can. So where do we start? How do we change this? How about starting with an expansive TV, radio, and viral campaign with catchy ads appealing to the public about the current crummy state of ag in Hawaii and help keep more of that $3 billion a year that's leaving the state, keep it here where it belongs. And then reaching out to young people, educating them that, that feeding our people is an honorable and wonderful career to pursue. I've talked with other stakeholders in the ad community and I've seen a few ads on TV, but we need to do much more. We need to do it on the level of the successful uh, no smoking campaign, ad campaigns, or the, the buckle up your seatbelt ad campaign. So any ideas on, on ads out there, please uh, contact my office. And so mahalo once again for including me in today's summit. And please reach out to me if you have any ideas on how we can work together and hunger in our state. Mahalo. Thank you so much, Senator Gabbard. That was really amazing. And I definitely, I know that if anybody on the student board or any other youth that I know, if they have any other ideas, I'm going to point them to you. Um, okay. Thank you so much for speaking. If anyone has any questions, please put in the Q&A and Senator Gabbard can message back if yes. If not, we'll answer, try to answer the questions at the end, just us. But thank you so much again. And you are... Okay. You rounded out our legislator um, to all our legislators who spoke today. So again, thank you to all of them. We are now going to shift gears to a law student panel where 